Aloha, I'm Lucy Andine, and I live in East Maui, and I'm very concerned with water issues and what happens to our water from our streams. And I'm here visiting with my friend Clara Pana, who lives in Nava'eha, and she's concerned about what's going on with our waters too. And uh, Claire, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Of course, water is the key issue for our cultural practice and our, just like everyone else. Thank you. Yeah, we both, uh, we both spend a lot of time at meetings and we've gone over to the legislature and try to get a hearing from some of our representatives. And it's been very disappointing uh, for, for me personally and, and for Claire as well. Uh, Claire's representative, uh, Justin uh, Woodson, is not um, not too interested in, in water things. And uh, uh, she lives right on the border between uh, Wailuku and Kahului. So do you ever go and, and try to meet with or communicate with Troy Hashimoto, too, about water stuff at all? I have tried to speak to Troy before, and um, I got a very politician kind of answer. So uh, it was uh, polite, but not anything that I would consider like, oh my God, I'm going to do something about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've had that same experience. Um, I've tried to meet with Troy. Uh, we've tried to meet uh, with Yamashita and uh, you, you can't even get in his office. You get an aide who you can drop a note off to or something. He... He has no time for Maui people when, when we've gone walking the halls trying to talk to him about some of the, the water bills that, I mean, they're life or death for us in some ways, aren't they, Claire? You know? They are. And, I, and you would think that our people would be more concerned. You know, it's about, it's about our water. And why, why aren't they listening? Yeah, they, they really seem to listen more to some corporate people that, you know, if you look at their campaign spending, that's that's who's giving money. And e even out in East Maui, uh, we have a rep from Molokai, Linda Coy. She's a nice person, and she's she's voted the right way on one of the water bills. But uh, on, on the most recent one, this water banking bill, uh, it, it's it's crazy. It's like she just voted right along with all the corporate Democrats. And basically, this is about East Maui water. It's, it's, it's about uh, allowing corporations that have big reservoirs, because, you know, we don't have big reservoirs. The county has a few reservoirs. It's the corporate water users, the, you know, the remnants of our plantations that have these big uh, reservoirs. And while we're trying to get streams restored in Nava'eha and East Maui, these guys are saying, oh, let's amend the water code to make sure that we can always have water in reservoirs for fire flow. Well, who would be against that? But when you read the bill, you know, you find out that actually there's nothing now that says that they can't fill their reservoirs. It's like the law supports anything having to do with fire flow just the way it is. But by kind of changing it and making it into a, you know, hallowed sort of part of the water code, uh, it, means that you can just hide behind it. And uh, we're both, Claire and I are both on the Sierra Club board and we got a bunch of um, documents because we, you know, we're taking on uh, Mahipono and we wanna know what they're really using their water for. So our attorney asked for discovery documents and they're using like 20 million gallons a day to fill reservoirs and um, from losses and leaks and run their hydroelectric plants. It's most of the water that they're diverting in the last couple of years. Out of 25 million, 20 million goes to this like slush fund. And it's the same thing with Nava Eha. It's like um, Wailuku Water has no accountability. They're just dumping water. And, and Claire, can you water your lawn? <laughs> no, this is my big pet peeve. Uh, I say, you know, I can't water my lawn. We have a brownout. But I go to South Maui, and they've got the sprinklers going in the middle of the day. And what is that about? What? How come I have to look at how much water I'm using, and they're using all my water? Yeah, 
and uh, the uh, it's kind of equal with the stream water. Uh, uh, our friends at the Hui Onaba'eha have just documented water dumping from our streams. And do our local people care about it? You know, our elected representatives, they've written to Troy Hashimoto, they've written to uh, Justin, uh, they've written to uh, 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 the whole Maui delegation, and only a couple of people, like Tina Weilberger guys, you know, said that is terrible. And uh, in fact, Tina voted against this water banking bill. And she was like one of the few that stood up. I mean, people were just told leadership needs you to vote for this bill. Well, why? Uh, actually, uh, some friends of mine went and checked with the Maui Fire Department and they said, are you asking that this bill be passed so you have water for fire flow? And they went, absolutely not. We always have all the water we want. <laughs> you know, nobody ever denies us water. Uh, the reservoirs get filled and we use them. We use the ocean if there's no reservoir. So this is a bill that is kind of like a, a phony bill. And yet um, most of our Maui delegation uh, in the state house is supporting it. So it's, it's really crazy. Uh, and then there's the water giveaway bill, which fortunately has died. But um, we have friends that are involved in this famous Carmichael case. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, I don't know, Claire, have you followed that very much? We, we wrote a support brief from the from Sierra Club about it. It's about East Maui taro farmers basically saying enough is enough. You know, you can't just give leases that are supposed to be one year and extend them into 13, 14 years. The law doesn't allow that. So, you know, I, I'd like to say something about that. I feel that in many ways that the the rights of the Kalo farmer, of the Kuleana, the, the Kuleana who actually uh, has inherited the Kuleana, not bought the Kuleana, bought the Kuleana is, is what may really stop all of this water theft because they have rights because they're growing Kalo and they should get the water first. And so maybe this will be a, put a curb on the corporate water stealing. But we need different people in the ledge, wouldn't you say? I mean, we need people Absolutely. who listen to us when we go there, yeah? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing our perennial fighter, Walter Ritty getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I'd love to see Ka'apuni uh, Iwohi uh, get in there. Here's a man who really knows about water. His family farms, his family has farmed for generations. He's well-educated, he understands water law, he's testified on these things, and he's got so disgusted yes. about being ignored that he's running for office. So, you know, people in, in, uh, in Nava'eha, in, in Waehu, and, and Wahe'e, and Waikapu, uh, uh, need to support these candidates that are going to stand up for what is right. And, and then, then, then we have this other bill. Well, the, the water giveaway bill is really bad because it tries to um, like make this process kind of become a backroom deal. Right now, you at least have to go through a public auction, at least the um, kind of the, uh, the appearance of a public auction. It would make it kind of non-mandatory. You could decide if, the state could decide if they just wanted to uh, negotiate directly with guess who, some large corporate <laughs> landowner, and, uh, and that there would be no limit on these temporary permits. These temporary permits uh, could be held over longer than a year because the, the language would just be taken out that limits them to a year, which is what, why our friends, um, you know, uh, Hailoa Carmichael and Leslie Jacinto, and went to court for the Carmichael case because they, they were just seeing, you know, the system was being gamed. So we, we need people in there who are willing to say no when it's a bad bill and not game the system, basically. Yeah, and, and, and then we have the last bill and Claire and I did a lot of lobbying on the water theft bill um, over the last couple of years. And uh, uh, it, it was amazing trying to go and get meetings with, with some of the people. I mean, we, we didn't have too good luck with the Maui delegation at all, except for, for Tina and, uh, um, and uh, McKelvey. But 
Yeah, you, you want to share uh, some of your reminiscences well, there? Yes, well, this is one of the few times that I went to Honolulu to um, testify. And I testified, and then I watched the people, that committee discuss it, and the chair outright lied, you know, about the restoration of the streams. And it was, it was incredible to me that he could get away with it. Uh, I just, oh my God. All the Hawaiians came out they, that day. It was beautiful, really beautiful, the solidarity. Yeah, from four they islands. Was, yeah. All of the Hawaiians came out, and he just, in our faces, lied to us. And so, what, what are we supposed to do? Who's got the gun, right? Yeah. I mean, who's yeah. got the gun? We've, we've definitely <laughs> got to get new leadership in there and, uh, and have people represent Maui that really care about Maui's water future. Uh, th this bill was uh, so bad, basically, mm -hmm. it was going to say that there was just this big loophole for any um, temporary water user that uh, was challenged by citizens. So if, if you were doing such, you know, heva, if you were doing so wrong that citizens challenged you and asked for a contested case, you basically were given the, you know, free to use the water with no more review for six more years card with this bill. And luckily it died, but it was not easy. We were like watching it like day and night to see if it was going to be revived, if it was going to be gutted and replaced by other language or, you know, it was just crazy. Lucian, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't that kind of happen already with A and B and the temporary leases? Yeah, this was part two. This was temporary <laughs> leases part two. And they, they got them extended for three years. And then this was to extend it uh, three plus another seven. So a 10 year total um, with no accountability. Mm -hmm. with, with, you know, we don't know how much water is taken from streams. We don't know how much water is actually needed by the people who live along the streams. Uh, this, was, this was centered on East Maui because it was about leases and there aren't leases in Nava'eha. Uh, it's, it's a different system. There's water permits there. But uh, people from all over, whether they live in East Maui or not, people who lived in all the different islands came out because it, it was just wrong. And, uh, and yet, a lot of people didn't listen to us. So we're looking forward to having some new leadership from Maui that are going to listen to us about our most important needs, the needs that affect all of us, our families. Claire just had a new grandchild today. You know, wh what do you want their future yeah. to be? It, it is always spoken about, this is for the future generations, but how can we do anything when we're stuck with people who aren't listening, it is not their first concern to serve the people. Yeah, yeah, it's their first concern. It, Which it is why I love Simon, because yeah. <laughs> I stood with him in the county council and testified, and, and I think that, you know, that's the kind of person who's gonna come up and remember the people. Yeah, yeah, we need people who have stood for the people all along and aren't just going to uh, take those envelopes with the payoffs from the corporate donors and forget who they represent. Mm -hmm. So uh, good luck uh, with the Pono and all the great candidates they support, and we're behind you 100%. Hey, Imua. Imua. <laughs>